We begin this half hour with the end of the world. It's a film version of one of the best known tales from the Bible's book of Genesis. The story of how all living things were saved from a great flood sent by God to punish humankind. Directed by Darren Aronofsky, whose previous work includes Black Swan and The Wrestler, this new epic stars Russell Crowe as Noah. But what of us? I guess we get to start again, too, in a new and better world. But first, we have to build them. A great flood is coming. The waters of the heavens will meet the waters of the earth. We build a vessel to survive the storm. We build an ark. We are pleased now to welcome Darren Aronofsky. Good morning to you, Darren. Good morning to both of you. So we both had a chance to see the movie. It's absolutely beautiful, Thank even you. though it's a little bit dark. Yeah. I read that this started with a poem when you yeah, were yeah. in seventh grade. Well, it took when, a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's only been 32 years uh, from idea to... Uh, to, to today. Um, you know, it all started off when I was 13. I had a magical teacher at junior high school in uh, Coney Island, uh, where I grew up, and um, Mrs. Freed said, all right, everyone take out a piece of paper and pen and write a poem about peace. And I ended up writing something about Noah, and I ended up winning a contest, and it was kind of the first moment that, um, you know, I, I saw myself possibly as a storyteller, and so the path began. And she actually, that teacher actually has a small role in the film. Yeah, well, you know, as the film started to come together, I decided to reach out to her, and both my parents were retired school teachers. So through their connections to the Board of Ed, we found her retired down in Florida, and I sent her an email, <laughs> and uh, she came up, and then I put her in a scene with Russell Crowe, a one-eyed crone. She, we put makeup on her, and it came out pretty good. Well, speaking of Russell Crowe, I read that you promised Russell Crowe something when you asked him to make this film. What did you say to well, him? Well, most people, when they think of Noah, they have very big expectations. So I said, Russell, I promise you'll never be wearing a robe and sandals standing on a houseboat with two big giraffes sticking up behind you. <laughs> and that's what this movie is about. It's about changing people's expectations. Because right. for me, when I was a kid, and I read the original story. I didn't really sympathize with Noah. I, I was thinking about the people that didn't get on, because I was wondering if I would be good enough to get on the boat. Right. And so everyone was wiped out. So there's actually a very, very more intense story going on. There's been a lot of talk about how accurate this is to the mm. book of Genesis. I read you said this is the least biblical, biblical movie ever made. Yeah. How did you walk that fine line, knowing that audiences might get upset because it wasn't accurate, and other audiences might get bored because it was too mm. accurate? Well, when I said the least biblical, biblical film, what I was saying was that we were reinventing the biblical epic, because most people think of their grandma's biblical epic. I mean, I love Cecil B. DeMille's Ten Commandments, but it's been 50 years since a biblical epic's been on the screen, so we wanted to do something really new and really fresh. So for people, non-believers, it's something, you know, it's, it's a great action film with a great family drama. But there's actually nothing in the film that contradicts the Bible. What we did is we, because it's only four chapters long, we were incredibly truthful to every single word that's in there and tried to breathe life into it and to bring it to life for 21st century audiences. This is a $130 million film. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who's counting. That's kind of breathtaking. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you're known for someone as being a director who, who likes control over their film. And I know mm -hmm. a friend of yours said to you when you took $130 million, don't take it because it won't be yours. Right. Um, but th it didn't turn out that way. It worked out fine. You know, uh, I, I had great partners with Paramount Pictures and Regency, and we all worked together to make the best film. You, you know, did fight over the final cut, though, didn't you? Well, th I mean, there was a lot of publicity on that, but there's not a film in the history of filmmaking where there's not discussion. When I made a $60,000 film like Pi, my first film, A Requiem for a Dream, mm -hmm. there was a lot of discussions with the people who threw in 15 grand about what was going to be in, what was going to be out. So. Right. Of course, those conversations happen. But the nice thing about working with studios is they're incredible filmmakers, and they've done this many, many times, and they can really be very helpful. One of the things that's really striking about this movie, though, is the landscape. I mm. mean, you shot it in Iceland yeah. against everyone's sort of nudging of other yeah. places it should be shot. Yeah. How did you guys get around the animals, though? Because I know you're a big animal lover, and you yeah, didn't yeah. want any issues with that. Well, I think it's kind of, you know, after seeing Planet of the Apes, it's pretty much proven that you can make sentient creatures come to life, and to take exotic animals and stick them on a set is pretty unethical. But it's also because we really wanted to capture the, the vast array of the animal kingdom, and it's a lot more complicated than the panda bears and the kangaroos and the giraffes and elephants. The animal kingdom is, is, is amazing in its variety, and the only way to do that would be with digital work. I think of you as a pretty intense filmmaker, <laughs> and, and, and you've said 
I'm in pain the whole time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shooting, editing. Why is that? Well, because you're always pushing yourself. You know, uh, the thing about filmmaking is you have a limited amount of time, and it's just a magic amount of time, and you just really want to make the most as possible. So you're always yearning to do better. I can't say it's always pain. I mean, I love the process. I love working <laughs> with actors. But you're pushing yourself always. So I guess it's pain in the same way that I imagine if you were a marathon runner, right. you're always trying to get an extra couple of seconds off of every mile. You're like Noah building the ark here. Absolutely. <laughs> it, it, believe me, that joke has been said. <laughs> Darren Off, the, the movie was absolutely excellent. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming on this Thank morning. you guys for having me. That was great.